Good morning, everyone. So glad that you could join us either online or in person and uh, that you have chosen to worship with us today. We're happy to have Bishop Cliff and Carlene here with us today, and uh, one will be preaching and one will be singing. Can you guess which one that would be? <laughs> Uh, children, we're so glad to have more children with us today, and uh, children jun junior kindergarten to grade six will be dismissed a little later in the service to go down to Kingdom Kids area, where they'll be doing some fun activities and getting to know each other again. If you have children that are younger than that, we are happy to have them here and stay with us. If you uh, find that they need to uh, have a little break, the foyer is open so you can go for a little walk. Or if you need a quiet area, there is the prayer um, room in the corner of the sanctuary or the nursery downstairs. Uh, fall is fast approaching and there's so many activities. We just want to remind you to keep uh, looking at the social media platform often and just check to see what's going on. For example, the seniors' Let's Do Lunch is Tuesday, September 28th. So if you haven't signed up, it's a takeaway lunch. And if you haven't placed your order, please call the church office to do so as soon as possible. And we invite you now to join us as we celebrate and uh, the time of worship. Well, I'll add my good morning as well. And we're going to start off just by looking at a little bit of scripture from 1 John 4. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And later in verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, because perfect love drives out fear. Would you stand with us and join in singing? When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow
Verse 28 through 31, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I don't know about you, but there are certainly times over the last two years that I've felt tired and weary and afraid. And knowing that God can pick us up during those times that we can draw on his strength in us. That is what has helped me to have hope and keep going through some hard days. And so I hope that brings you hope this morning and reminds you of the faithfulness and the goodness of God in your life.
thank you for meeting with us this morning, for being with us through the storms of life and the celebrations of life. God, we thank you that every step of our journey, you are near with us when we draw near to you. God, we just bless you this morning and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to please be seated. Well, good morning. This is a great day for Pastor Tyler. He's been on a long journey for quite a long time, and today is the day that he officially gets recognized and celebrated for his accomplishments. I first knew Pastor Tyler way back when, when uh, Pastor Vic and I were appointed to this church in 1984. I can't tell you exactly how old he was at that time, because he's not telling me how old he is right now. But anyway, um, I have a hunch that if you just take a look at his son, Jeremy, he could very well be named Tyler II. A cute little kid with uh, lots of activity going on, curious, but one who grew up to be a sharp young man, interested in technology, and that technology has stood him a good stead for his first career. But then God interrupted his life and called him into pastoral ministry. That's what we're celebrating today. He's been with us at Trolls Road now for three, maybe four years as an associate pastoral intern. And if you've been receiving emails from him, you might have noticed a change in his signature, the Reverend W. Tyler Lane. His heart has always been to help others uh, to develop in their gifts and to find uh, places where they can serve. So his capable leadership has shown up in lots of ways at Trolls Road during this period of time. Children's ministries, discipleship, prayer, worship, as of today, uh, Plan to Protect, TNT, that's Tuesday night in Trolls. The um, car show has began, become a regular, uh, which is an outreach to our community, and I'm sure it will continue. So you can see, in spite of the fact that he likes to talk, that he still gets a lot done. Well, before Pastor Tyler came to us, he and his family attended the Freeway, now the Corner Church, and there he contributed significantly in additional ways, particularly as board chair and uh, serving on pastoral search teams. And then denominationally, he's used his gifts on a pers the personnel team and also on the MEGAP committee. All that is evidence that he truly has been on a journey, and he still is. He's been skillfully mentored by Pastor Dale, Pastor John, his accountability partner, and others. And now he's ready to fulfill the dream of his life, which is eventually to be able to lead a church on his own. So be assured he's not going anywhere real soon, but the day will come, and when that day comes, I hope you will all be able to rejoice with him in that achievement. We have a chance this afternoon to participate in his ordination service at 2 o'clock. 
Cliff, uh, Bishop Cliff will be speaking, and then a little bit later, his uh, pastoral colleagues will be able to join Bishop Cliff in laying on of hands for the ordination service. You don't need to register, but there will be a guest book that you can sign when you arrive. But this morning, we just want to take a few minutes, kind of an in-house church family uh, recognition of Pastor Tyler, and to celebrate this milestone with him in a more personal way. So I'm going to invite Pastor Tyler and Jenny uh, to come to the platform on the upper level, if you will. Now Jenny, in her own quiet way, has been supporting Pastor Tyler uh, by being the primary breadwinner so that he could be freed up to uh, work on his studies and also to be able to fulfill his responsibilities here. She's also taken major care of uh, Audrey and Amelia and Jeremy during that time. And so, Jenny, we're going to have uh, a little bit of appreciation to you in the form of a guest of a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> We just want you to know that you are appreciated, too. Now, Pastor Tyler, um, this, I'm just going to hand this card up to you. It contains sincere congratulations from the church family. It also contains some words of encouragement and blessing uh, to speed you on your way uh, when the time comes. We also have a special gift for you. But just before we present that gift, I want to make a comment. I don't know if you've ever tried to keep a surprise from this guy, but I was beginning to wonder if he didn't have the gift of omnipresence because he is everywhere. <laughs> in this, there's no place in this building that he isn't, especially when he's not supposed to be. So, uh, Pastor Tyler, we want to present this gift to you. We hope it will be useful and meaningful for you, and I promise that it won't clutter your bookshelves. You'll still have lots of rooms for books. So, Pastor John. <laughs> Here's your card. You. Bless you both. I'd hug you if I could. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tyler. We wanted to appreciate him, and uh, he's a unique guy, so we needed a, a unique appreciation. And so a giant Rice Krispie Square seemed like the obvious choice, as I'm sure you can all appreciate. Uh, we are thankful uh, for Tyler and the great work that he does with our uh, family ministry. And, uh, you know, as we know in our church, the children, the youth are so important. One of the things I love about this church is that, for instance, these past seven days... We celebrated special birthdays for Kathleen and Bill. I'm not going to tell you what, what birthday it was, but it was their 10th time being 70. <laughs> and then uh, today, actually, we have a young man here. Uh, Henry, where are you, Henry? He's three years old. Henry, give me a wave. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday to Henry. Three, 80, everything in between. A little bit younger, a little bit older. I love that we're a family church, and I appreciate that you are part of that, and I'm so thankful for Pastor Tyler's role in helping us navigate that. We are very excited today to be starting our Kingdom Kids program. This is for kids that are junior K to grade 6, and uh, we are going to invite you at this time, kids, in an orderly fashion. They asked me to say orderly. I can't wait to see what that looks like with kids running out. But Nora's at the back. Nora, can you give me a wave? If, if you want to join our kids down at Kingdom Kids, you're welcome to head that direction right now and go downstairs for your time of connection and worship and hanging out. While those kids are making their way... Isn't that beautiful? Isn't this awesome? I am so... I miss this part of the service. We haven't done this in a while. Um... As you know, we're also uh, looking for uh, another associate pastor that will give leadership to our outreach and to our youth ministry, and so please be praying about that. 
Uh, last week, I had the opportunity to sit down with five of our young people to talk about baptism. We also have two people getting baptized next week. There's a lot of exciting things going on. And, and again, I am just so glad to be part of the Charles Road family. And I'm glad that you are joining us not only this morning, but through prayer and participation are part of the Charles Road team. Something that is happening starting tomorrow... And we're launching it today very appropriately with Bishop Cliff here and and, uh, representing our denomination is we are going to to be observing a 21 days of prayer and fasting. And part of why we're doing it this, this way, 21 days, is because our denomination is doing a 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so we are partnering with them in that regard. We're going to be praying alongside other churches and other folks from the Free Methodist community in Canada. And we are going to be praying for our world and our country, for our churches, and for one another. I'm very excited about that. On Tuesday uh, during the day, our church has signed up to take that day to pray specifically for our country, for our denomination. And uh, other churches have taken other days. And if you go onto our website or if you go onto those email blasts, you can click on that. You can still sign up. We would like to just be part of, of saturating our country and our churches with prayer. But there's lots of other opportunities to pray and to fast. I made the joke that, that now that Tyler's officially a reverend, he's going to be fasting for the whole 21 days. But uh, that's not entirely true. But he is going to be doing some specific fasting uh, exercises. And so if you, if you are interested in fasting but you're not sure what it's all about, I would encourage you to connect with him. And you can join with him and others as they not only fast, but they talk about what that will look like and then talk about what happened. By the way, fasting is where we remove something like food from our lives and we replace it with time for God. So maybe it's only skipping a meal, but during that meal you spend some time in prayer. Or maybe it's not eating when you wake up in the morning until lunchtime, and in that morning, every time you're hungry, you think about that hunger for God. But please, if you are going to fast, make sure that you've cleared that with some other people, including some kind of medical uh, person, potentially. Uh, We don't want anybody doing anything that would be dangerous. But the Bible invites us, again, to, to exchange our hunger for things like food with our hunger for God. So if you want to be part of that, you can talk to Pastor Tyler, and we have some resources for you or some people that you can, you can uh, journey with. As far as prayer goes, we have some other awesome opportunities, some email chain prayers. You know, you get those annoying email chain letters. This is, this is the opposite of that. This is beautiful. We do this on Wednesday nights where you hear other people writing out their prayers to God and quoting scripture and sometimes worship songs or telling stories. It's a beautiful way to pray and to encourage one another. We're going to have different opportunities to meet together either on Zoom or in person here in the building. So lots of opportunities. No revival throughout the history of the church has ever happened without prayer being at the front end of that. And so for those that are thinking this, this country needs a revival or, or our churches need to be really challenged and encouraged to rise up, it starts with prayer. So would you join us and take these opportunities to pray with us? There's lots going on in our church family, but anything that we are going to do it all starts with prayer. So you can go to our website or check the email blast and, and uh, figure out how you can sign up for that. I'm so excited about praying, I've completely forgotten what comes next. Does someone, does someone have an order of service? It, oh, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Liz, why don't you come and lead us in prayer as a church family? And we're so thankful that uh, you're here today with your family. Come and pray. little skipping here. (laughs) Is it wonderful to know that our fears and anxieties don't have a stand, a chance to stand when we are surrounded with God's love as Christians? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, our Heavenly Father, We lift our hearts with praise and thanksgiving for this great opportunity to come together to worship you once more. There is so much joy in our hearts to glorify your name on this beautiful Sunday morning. Lord, you are the great I am of our lives. 
because you have time and time again showed us through this pandemic that without your love and strength, we cannot be useful. Your steadfast love has kept us so motivated to set our eyes on you at all times. Thank you, Lord, for giving us opportunities to pray and support our friends and families who need your help, healing, guidance, and wisdom. Open their hearts to receive you, Lord, and draw them closer to you so they too can experience the greatness of you, Lord. We pray for our congregation this morning, especially for Pastor Tyler, who is going to be ordained as a reverend officially this afternoon. We thank you for guiding him with the ministries of VBS, Kingdom Kids, and overall technical assistance at our church. We commit him in your hands to serve you faithfully and carry out your way, your vision, and your clarity for our church and for this community and beyond. Father, you know all of us by name. If anyone here is feeling down in heart, lift them up and let them feel revived and restored when they leave this place. Remove all anxieties and fear that might interfere in our lives, our hope, is firm and solid in you, Lord, to face any situation that may come our way. Lord, today we once again declare that you are the almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, in whom we believe and trust. We love you, Lord, for all your greatness and mercy. We pray for Whitby Free Methodist Church at this time. Help them to partner with other churches to extend their support to their congregation, community, and beyond. <clears throat> Gate 316 is another partner in ministry for whom we pray now. Father, help those who, left, who feel left out, lonely, hopeless, and homeless. Many may be exposed to COVID-19 without masks and proper nutrition. We humbly ask you to protect and shield all of them, including the volunteers who work tirelessly to serve these individuals. Keep them safe, Father. We remember the preschool and school-age children who have lost interaction or interactive skills due to this pandemic and are struggling to adjust in daycares and schools. Father, help the teachers and daycare providers to show compassion and understanding towards these little ones. We also pray for our seniors at this time. Grant them peace and comfort, whether they are in nursing homes, retirement homes, or even living with their families, Lord. Bless them and protect them. Also bless all the PSWs who help the seniors with daily living as they move from home to home, carrying out their duties. At this time, we remember one of our seniors, Doreen, who needs your healing hand. God be with her and her family in, this, in a special way during this difficult time. We also pray for our country as we elect our new leader next week. <clears throat> we ask for your guidance throughout this whole process. Lord, we now ask for your blessings on Bishop Cliff as he delivers his message to us. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is so nice to be back here to see everyone again. Um, it was one of those funny things when, when COVID hit, 
<clears throat> I changed jobs and we moved about three hours east. And it was funny, partway through the summer, someone called and they asked something about the church. And I'm like, actually, we, we live in Merrickville now. And I know that's happened with many people. What a surprise. All of a sudden, when you don't talk to someone in a short amount of time and, <clears throat> and they're gone. And it's been an amazing, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what wearing a mask does to me. Okay, we're all good. Um, it's been an amazing, amazing journey to be able to, to go to where we are, be near family, to be in a different church family, but it's so nice to be able to be back. And both Cliff and I, as we were driving in on Charles Road, both of us said, we have a lot of good memories here, eh? And uh, we both agreed that that was the case. Psalm 57 says, have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy. I will take refuge in you. I'll take refuge in you under the shadow of your wings until the disaster ends. I was reading that just before all the memorials on September 11th last week. And I kept thinking, although we aren't David in the Psalms, who's being chased by ravenous animals and enemies and being chased into a cave in the middle of a war, it can sometimes feel like that metaphorically with all the stuff that has happened in the past couple of years. And so much is going on in our culture. The emotions have raised. But he names everything that's going on in his life. And then he says this, and we can relate. My heart is steadfast, O Lord. My heart is steadfast. And you I'll trust. I will awake my soul and sing. For your faithfulness reaches to the heavens. So this morning, I'd encourage you as I sing this, it's going to be a prayer to turn your eyes on him. One of the lines is, and watch the world grow dim in the light of him. And with everything going on, that's exactly what I do when I'm singing this song. Just let the world around me fade. And Father, I want to look at you. Oh, weary mind, oh, troubled soul. All the broken pieces that you hold Turn them over, give them up And then watch what Jesus does Oh, heavy heart, oh, heavy load Lay it down Thank you. 
Good morning. It is good, good to be home and uh, to see you all, almost, with your masks on, but it is good. We, um, we are delighted to be a part of what's happening this afternoon with, uh, with Tyler and uh, really, really happy to be here this morning with you all. So we're going to jump right in, ready? If you have a Bible, which uh, you often have on your phones, we're looking for number six. So if it takes you a minute, we're looking for numbers six. And let me tell you about this, uh, this fascinating season that, uh, that uh, the church in Canada is experiencing, which y- you're all very aware of it, right? The polarization, what's going on with people groups and, and within church. And it's not hard to start a fire, let me assure you. If one of you stood up and said one word, you could probably split the room in two, you know, with the word vaccination. And just the room would split, or Donald Trump, and the room would split, right? And you would look at each other with distress, and, and it all happens like that. And uh, there's this, this phenomenon. It's called uh, citizenship confusion. It's not new at all. It's in Scripture. You'll see it there. Not those words, but you'll see, you'll see the symptoms and some of the pain that it causes. But it's this. It's, it's Christians uh, confused with the difference between their rights as, uh, as a Canadian citizen and their responsibilities and, res- and privileges as a, as a citizen of the of the kingdom. It's a fascinating thing. Let me give you one example. Ready? In the news, Christians going to prison or making a big fuss about wearing masks or meeting together. They have these 30 seconds nationally to express something about who we are and what we believe in, and that's what they express. What what charter of freedom and rights are they appealing to when they appeal to those rights? Which rights are they appealing to? Which charter of freedom and rights? Is it scripture charter of freedom and rights? Or is it the Canadian charter of freedom and rights? It's the Canadian one. Now, do not hear me wrong. I I love Canada for the mosaic of beliefs and opinions that we have. It gives us some texture, you know, and some richness. And and all of us in this room are allowed to have opinions. But publicly, what do we do with that? If you're given 30 seconds nationally... As a believer in Jesus Christ, and you are a citizen of the kingdom, therefore, what should you do with those 30 seconds? You need to speak Jesus. That, that needs to be what Because we have 30 seconds, right? And Canada needs what right now? One more opinion about or Jesus Christ. Obviously, Jesus. Paul and... Uh, and more importantly, Jesus lived into this very thing. For sure, they abided by their citizenships. For sure, they, they uh, Paul appealed all the way up. Judici- you know, he went through the whole legal system in order to get to Rome, not to appeal his case, but to speak Jesus. Jesus paid taxes. He, he probably had opinions about the oppression of his people, but their voice every single time deferred to their opinion their ideas, their responsibility in the kingdom. That was what, how they lived it out. And I, I'd like to invite us to remember that as we process the things we're processing. And in particular, if I had one thing I could say to, to Canadian Christians about what it is to be a citizen of, king, of the kingdom is this, ready? We need to learn more than ever what it is to be a people of peace. I mean, shalom is it's used over 550 times in Scripture, that word alone. Um, Jesus, uh, God is called Jehovah, uh, Jehovah uh, Shalom uh, over 170 times in Scripture. You and I, I've used the word Jesus. He is the prince of peace of priests. Peace, you heard what I said. Prince of that, peace. And we are invited into a covenant of, of peace. Did you know that? Isaiah 54, Malachi 2, Ezekiel, it's all there. The, we, we shorten it, we call it the covenant that you and I are invited into with God, but it's actually a covenant of peace. So it's a covenant of peace through the Prince of Peace, from the God of Peace, and so what should we be marked by? Who should we be? People of, of peace. It should be the language we speak, it should be what oozes out of us. For sure you're a kingdom of Canada, or a kingdom of Canada, a citizen of Canada, and for sure, you have opinions and ideas, and, but this one always trumps 
Our citizenship of the kingdom always trumps the other or informs the other. It's how we live. It's what we should be about. So when I wanna, wanted to connect these two dots, the prince of peace, or being people of peace and our citizenship, this number six passage is what came to mind for us. It's a, it's a blessing. It's actually the, um, someone called it the, uh, the Old Testament's Lord's Prayer. And that's a pretty good description of what we're about to read. Because you know how the Lord's Prayer, some of us pray it daily. I'm sure some of you do. And that's not wrong at all. But most all of us know it. And we know the principles and the spirit of it. And we pray uh, around that all the time, the Lord's Prayer. And that, that is the essence of this Numbers chapter 6 piece. It is, um, there's, a, there's something here that you need to own. It's foundational, and it should be how we live out of. And it's, the, it's this, this book of law, Numbers, where there's la, 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 and then there is this, this passage. And if you've got it open in your Bibles, you'll see that's even indented. It's, it just kind of stands out. Some people think it's been inserted. I don't think so. I think it's there in purpose because God is saying, okay, this is how we live as citizens. Boom, 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 boom. But this, I want you to hear this. This is the heart of the matter, this. And it's to the priests. Who are the priests? Well, let me compare, let me help you understand priests by remembering there's prophets and priests. Both were religious people in the Old Testament. And the prophets, their job was to hear from God and speak into the people. That was a prophet. The priest, on the other hand, they were to help people move towards God. So they were the ones that would take the sacrifices and, and walk you into that that service and explain what was going on and lead us into his presence. So the prophets spoke from God into the people and the priests helped the people move towards God. And there's some fluidity in that. You'll see some characters in scripture that they were priests, but they also spoke as prophets. And there's some of that. But generally, that's the rule. And here's the fun fact. When Jesus came, he made you and I a kingdom of priests. So you and I, when, and then when that word is chosen, it's, it's, uh, it's chosen in order for you and I to understand that our new role, priests, you and I, a priest, are to walk people into the presence of God. You've got that kind of value on your life. You are that kind of representative. So this passage is to the priests. This is for you and I. Verse, verse 22. So this is how you are to bless the priests, God says. This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you. Okay, stop. If you're reading this, or if you just heard me, I want you to underline in your head the two word times you saw the word bless. Ready? Here's what it said. Priests, God said, this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. God's people. Say to them, the Lord bless you. Okay, who does the blessing? Well, priests. This is how you are to bless the people. I hope you're hearing it. You are to bless the people, but God's doing the blessing. And you are invited into this intimate, supernatural opportunity. Do you hear it? You are to bless the people. And then when you step up to the mic, the Lord bless you. You are invited into the power of God moving in people's lives. That, again, Christians stop and think, whoa, that, that's big deal stuff. That's, that's really, really important, who you are in God's economy. The word bless, and I know I've mentioned this here, actually, is part of the big three. Remember the big three? The big three are these, evangelism, prayer, and blessing. It's, it's a, they're, they're, they are all part of your responsibility as a citizen of, of the kingdom. And here they are. God doesn't need you to tell your neighbor about him in order for that, him to speak to that neighbor and, and invite him to himself. But he chooses you. Prayer. God doesn't need you to pray in order to move in this world. He's God. But he chooses you, right? And God doesn't need you to bless someone in order for him to bless them. But he chooses you. Again, I hope you hear the responsibility, the, the bigness, the eternalness of the responsibility we have as citizens of the kingdom. And you are to bless them. And a blessing is, in the Old Testament, was, was about um, health. It was about wealth. 
and land, and it was about lots of children. That, that was an Old Testament blessing. None of that is in the New Testament. Did you know that? Fascinating stuff. I'm not going to give you the answer to what a, what a blessing is in the New Testament because I think this passage is so rich that it really is worth your time to go into it and say, okay, what, what is blessing in the New Testament? But I'll, I'll give you a couple clues. Ready? One, read the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, right? Matthew 5. Beatitudes. Read the blessing there. And the other part I'll tell you about the blessing in the New Testament, it's explicitly this. You are given in order to give. You are blessed in order to bless. It's all about your importance in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it was, um, it was more passive. God would give in order to, to show you that, that the covenant promise. If you live into this, then I will do this into your life. And other nations will see it and they want in. In the New Testament, there's an active nature to blessing. I'm giving. I'm giving you these gifts. I'm giving you these resources. I'm giving these church family that you're a part of in order for you to... Again, I want you to hear the responsibility we have in this. So the Lord bless you. It comes out of a deep prayer. Blessing is a, is a deep listening prayer. And you ask about somebody. You know, I, I want to pray... Lord, for Ray. She's been on my mind. And so, Lord, what, what would you have me? How would you have me bless Ray? And you listen. And then when a promise or a word or a gift comes to mind for Ray, then, then really humbly bring it to her. Don't say, God told me, because that doesn't go well all the time. I, I knew a young guy, he said that to his, he thought was going to be his future fiance. It didn't work that way. God told me that we should be married, and she said, he didn't tell me that, actually, and so you proceed with humility on this one, and say, Ray, I've been praying for you, and this came to mind, a promise, or a word, or a gift, and then God fires that up, it's his job to make that promise, word, or gift mean something, Carlene did that for our neighbor, she prayed, blessing, and, and we met this, and we're in a new little town, and she brought banana bread, and it became a conversation, and it became a prayer, and it became her attending church, and that's the nature of blessing. It's a promise or a word or a gift. Chocolate chip cookies to, to your old friend Cliff, that could be a gift, right? That could be a <laughs> blessing. Pray about it. I, he may have something to say about that for you. Say to the people of Israel, the Lord bless you and keep you. Keep here is protection, it's guarding, and again, spend some time in that, and do not give light answers, because do we believe God protected our brothers and sisters in Haiti? And don't answer quickly on that one, because people watching us say, well, what happened then? But there is a beautiful answer. I've met with some of our brothers and sisters in Haiti, and they use this language of God's protection, not because they were protected and their neighbor wasn't either, by the way. Praise God that I wasn't on that plane that went down. That's not God's protection. That's, that's kind of irresponsible, uncareful theology. What is God's keeping? What does it look like? And I'll give you one verse in your study. Ready? Colossians chapter 3, that we are hidden in Christ. So can we pretend this is somebody big? Can we... Who's big? Barry, Barry Ron, okay? Barry Ron standing in front of me, and I'm standing in behind him, and I'd be hidden behind him. And what happens behind him when you're coming up with me threatening or wanting to hurt or you see him first? If we are hidden in Christ, then Christ is seen first. It's Christ that everything comes through to me. And behind here, I can breathe. I can think. I've got time to, to react. But I'm not here alone. That passage is plural, you and I, we are hidden in Christ. And so all of us together have this opportunity behind Christ to, to rally around each other and to learn what it is to encourage each other and support each other and love into each other. And we're praying that for the people, that you would know the hiddenness of Christ, God's protection. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. So who probably wrote numbers? Do you know who wrote numbers? Moses. Moses, yep. You said that with authority or are you just guessing? Authority, well done. It's wrong. So, uh, no, no, you're good. You're good. It's good. It's good, brother. 
We're pretty sure it was Moses. Who had a face-shining experience? Moses. Went up the hill, came down, because he had spent time with God, and people said, wow, you're, you're radiating, man. You're, you put a veil on. It's really shiny. So when Moses is praying for the people to bring a blessing into the people, he wants this, this face-shining opportunity, presence of God. Now, it's not that we're blessing for God to show up. God's already here. What we're praying is that they would pay, be aware of the presence of God. What, what kind of cool opportunity is that for Christians to help people understand that God is present in their lives, that God has always been present, always wanting to be with them, longing for them. And, and when you sit down with someone long enough and for a long enough time in their journey, you start to begin to see places where God, God was there and they hadn't seen him and, and now at this point in their lives, they're able to see him. And, and part of this blessing is that you would help people become aware of the presence of God in their lives, that they would be aware of the presence of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Grace is, uh, we, we don't have time to get into grace this morning. Grace is big deal word in scripture. But when grace is mentioned, it's always alluding to these big, big things. Salvation, which is deliverance or healing, and forgiveness. So when we're talking about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be on you, what are you praying for? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is, well, his salvation in your life, that he would save you, that you would know his, the freedom you can have in him, the, the healing that you can have in him, and forgiveness is part of that story. People of peace are praying this kind of... This, we're eager for people to know this, this redemption of God, this love of God, this calling of God on people's lives, this freedom in Christ and forgiveness. Oh, we, we got to ooze with forgiveness, eh? That, that's got to be our language. Grace is all about unmerited favor. That's what the word means, right? It's, we, we don't deserve it, but God shows it to us. And forgiveness is what he shows Time and time again throughout Scripture. And time and time again in my life. And time and time again in yours. Where he just forgives you again. And loves you again. Or always. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And then the Lord turn his face towards you. You know what that one is? You ever had someone important look at you and go, I looked at Larry, I thought you were sitting there, honey. That was kind of an awkward moment, actually. <laughs> but someone important or special look in your direction? What's that feel like? That's the language here. It's an idiom. It's the idiom that God would show um, his delight. You would know God's delight in your direction. It actually means smile at you. That you would know that God smiles at you. Now, I've met people that they think God smiles at them all the time. There's something beautiful about that, but not always right, because I know those people, and it's not always true, right? And if you read Scripture, God is not just a God that is an old grandpa that is not aware of everything going on around him. He's very aware. But then I know people where God never smiles at them. They've never seen that. It's rules, and there's shame, and they just don't deserve that, and it's just not... I had one person say to me when I said, what do you see God's face in this issue? It's God's face. You don't... That's, that's fluffy stuff. And I said, fluffy? Scripture tells us to seek the face of God. Seek my face. What's that mean? It means the Word of God. Well, yeah, but actually a whole lot of places, he actually talks about reading the Word of God. If he meant to say word of God, he would have said word of God. What does he mean by seek my face? You sang a song about that this morning, seeing the face of God. We love your face. You're looking at us. What's it mean to seek the face of God? An invisible God. What's it mean to receive a smile from an invisible God? You're going to be disappointed in my answer for now. But this is part of the answer. There's mystery in it. 
I mean, Trinity, there's mystery, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one Godhead, and three persons, and I can almost talk about it, and then it starts hurting my head, right? Try talking about the mystery of the Trinity, and there's mystery there. Paul uses the word mystery, and it means general revela- uh, um, gradual revelation. He keeps showing up, keeps showing us more and more and more. Mystery means that it's something that we know now, and we keep knowing more and more, and in eternity we'll know, we'll know it all. There's mystery in the Trinity. There's mystery in prayer. Where does your prayer go? How does it work? We don't know. We're just told that we're invited into this powerful, wonderful uh, opportunity with God. Uh, There's mystery in the communion. And there's mystery here in seeking the face of God. But as you do it, it becomes clearer and clearer that there's an opportunity to know his heart to know his presence and what he smiles about, what he doesn't smile about. I was thinking about my, um, my mom. Most of you don't know my mom. Right, so you can't picture her, her features, right? But I'll tell you a mama story, ready? I was about four years old. They gave me a toolkit. Now, back in the day, a toolkit actually was real tools shrunk down to size. Not, none of this Fisher-Price plastic stuff. Do you remember the toolkits that actually were real tools? Like, I had a real hammer, but it was shrunk down to size. I had a little uh, square, and it was pokey as all get out. It was metal. I know it was pokey because I poked my sisters, a lot, and it was taken away from me. That I lost. Um, it had a screwdriver for real, just shrunk down to size, and a saw with real teeth because that's how we rolled back in the day, right? We lived in an apartment in Montreal. There were no trees in an apartment in Montreal. My dad was hardly home. He was not a woodworker. So what do you do with a saw when you're four years old? What do you do? Where do you look for whatever, right? Wood. I found a broom. It was wood. And I I did it. And honestly, for years later, it was so funny. We'd all laugh cautiously because my mom would sweep like this. And she never replaced that broom for whatever reason. But when she walked in the room and saw me having cut that wood in two, what face did my mother make? My French-Canadian mother who wasn't a fan of that toolkit. She took that away from me. I got it back, obviously, because I found wood. It was my bedpost, and uh, I don't know if it's because I was being quiet or what happened, but she walked in, and what face did my mother make? Can you picture it? She mostly said my dad's name and then French swear words when she walked in. Can you picture the face now? Even though you've not seen her, because you know something about her heart in that moment, right? I want you to know, did I just, oh, there we go. I want you to hear that he smiles at you. He delights in you. And there are times when you mess up, and I want you to picture the parent face. It is not hate, and it is not rejection ever. It is, I want you to come home. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you, delight in you that you would see that. Of all the things that we could bless people with, now we could be blessing with all kinds of other things, right? um, You know, that they would would have strength and power and resources, but instead we're we're being asked to bless people that they would know the smile of God. Why? Because it is that kind of life-changing experience. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And I don't have to give you the definition of peace because this whole passage is all about peace. That's the definition of peace. The Lord bless you. If we know the blessing of God... What it is that he wants, the promise or word or gift from him, and, we're, and it's active in our lives, and we're giving it to others, then you are living in peace. There's peace there. And if the Lord is keeping you, if you know his protection, what it is to be hidden in Christ, there's peace there. What, else, what other word would you use for that? This breathing space, this, this rallying space, this church family space, this belonging space, that's peace. The Lord uh, make his face shine upon you that you would know his presence. I mean, with that comes peace. The Lord turn his face and be gracious to you. I mean, with forgiveness 
There's peace. You ever, you ever have a fight with someone and you make it right? How do you feel after that moment walking away from that? You've got peace. And the Lord turned his face towards you. Can you picture that for a second? Can you do that? Just be quiet and picture his face in your direction. And if you have trouble with that, then I, I would highly encourage you to find someone to pray with. Sit down with someone and say, I want to see his face. I want to learn what that means more and more. But when you start to understand his smile in your direction, there's peace. Here's the gift. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray this for you all, for us, because you need to own this stuff. You need to enjoy this blessing. But the blessing of God as priests is that you would bring this blessing so your homework is this. Would, would you try this week? Would you, would you bring a blessing into people's life? Now, a complete stranger going up and saying, may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine, they, they don't, they're not going to know what to do with you. So that's where you treat it as the Lord's prayer and take some of the principles and, and you do with it what, exactly what it is that, uh, that you are, you know, if, it, it's, if it's cookies or if it's a promise or a special word that I just want you to let you know God loves you or go there. Would you try that this week? Okay? Because that's acting in to your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. Let me pray this into your life and then I think the worship team is coming. So Father, I pray for my church family here. I pray, Holy Spirit, Father and Son, that you would, um, you would bless them. Lord, that you would uh, give them a promise, a word, a gift that you would bless them, they would know what it is to be hidden in you, protected in you. They would know what it is to experience your presence. They would know your presence and all the ways that you're present with them all day long, that they would know your grace. They would know forgiveness from you. They would know freedom in you. They would know what it is that they are saved and, and moving in your direction. Father, that they would know your smile, your absolute delight in them, that they cannot fail as believers because you're their father and you're going to walk them to the next and to the next and to the next and always welcoming them home. And Lord, that they would experience all this and know your peace. And then Father, that we would be peace bringers in a season when Canada needs us desperately to be peace bringers. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand again with us? And as we sing this song, I will follow, let's think about what that means to be a people of peace, following after the Prince of Peace.
much, worship team, for leading us. Thank you for joining us today. Bishop Cliff and Carlene, thank you for being with us. Um, we have a lot to be thankful for, but we have a lot to do. And it's a privilege, it's an opportunity as, uh, as kingdom citizens. I want to remind you again that we're starting our 21 days of prayer. And you know, there's a, there's a correlation between peace and prayer. And, uh, and Cliff mentioned it a few times in the New Testament blessing. What does that look like? And prayer is a big part of it. Listen to these familiar words about prayer, but also notice peace. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May this be your experience this week. Uh, as you live out your relationship with God, as you act in the, in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. I invite you back at 2 o'clock for the ordination service if you'd like to join us. There's no registration, pre-registration, uh, but if you're not able to join us, we're not streaming the service, but it will be recorded and posted later, so you'll be able to take part in that regard. And uh, uh, Pastor Tyler will be in the parking lot afterwards if you want some of that giant Rice Krispie Square. <laughs> Have a great week. God bless you and go in peace.